Hello Stampers, it's the Pampered Stamper, and I was asked to do a video on the brusho, and I, I think I might have done one already, um, but Stampin' Up! now carries brusho crystal color, which is a very bright pigment powder. So it's in Prussian blue, gamboge, which is um, orange and yellow, and then a yellow, and the moss green, and brilliant red. Now, when I first saw that there were five colors, like, I like to collect things, I thought five colors isn't enough, there isn't a brown. However, you have to go back to grade school, and if you mix colors, you get different colors. So with the five colors, you can do just about everything. Um, so I did play around a little bit, and I will include a link to a website that has basic color theory so that you know what to do. So I started playing around a little bit, and I wanted to paint with the brush, because it's really nice. But you can see the different... This is a flower from Petal Palette. But this one I stamped with Memento, and you can see that the black bled a little bit, especially in the yellow one. So you have to stamp with archival black and you won't get that. Um, and then I did the birds as well. So this bird is just totally done in our blue. And I started with the dark on the wing and I just it just kept coloring. And of course, the more you color, the more it uses up. And so it just naturally goes lighter. Um, and then the beak was just yellow. And then I continued with the yellow here. And then the top of the bird is that moss green color. However, you'll see this other green I mixed and Rachel, what makes green again? Yellow and blue, I think. Yeah. Yes, yellow and blue makes green. So that was what this was. And purple is red and blue. So that's what got me my purple. But I definitely like this green better for the leaves than this. And then here I mix the two. But enough talking, I'm gonna show you how to do this. So I'll move this out of the way. And so I actually had to use shimmer white paper because I am totally out of watercolor paper. So I'm inking up with archival black and remember the twist and shout technique because it's, okay. And then a good firm push there. And then you take the powder and you put a little bit on a block. And you don't need much. So you can probably barely see it. Make sure you put that push pin back in the pot because if it falls over, a little poof of powder might come out. And you take your aqua painter and squeeze it a little and look at that. Beautiful red. And then you paint your whole thing, or as Rachel likes to say, color, because I each didn't think I'm painting. Rachel is very artistic. She could actually draw and paint beautifully. So then if I wait, so I'm just going to lay this here with the lid off, and I know there's a red there, and then we'll do yellow. There we go. And another aqua painter. And a yellow rose. But it paints really nicely, and it's a lot, like, I think that powder will last you the rest of your life unless you really go crazy. Um... So it's very good investment, actually. Rachel didn't like my blue rose, but I'm doing another blue one. Just to show you the color. And there is such a thing as a blue rose. So there. All right, I'm getting the eye roll. All right, see how it's dark in the middle? Very, very dark, and then you just go out. This is a very watery um, aqua painter as well, but that's okay. If you have a paper towel, you could just blot it up a little bit, but you'll get a nice watercolor look like this. It's good to leave a little bit of white. It makes it more artistic. So now let's go with the green, because the green was tricky. So let's just do moss green. We can have a look at what it looks like. This one's... See, when the powder comes out, it almost looks orange. It's really strange. But when you wet it, voila, it makes a bit of a muddy, well, like moss. See? Kind of a little bit like our always artichoke so it's not bad but okay I have to think again what made green blue and yellow okay right so I'm gonna do a different so watch this I'll just pick up a little blue a little bit of yellow mix I oh, oh it's too blue too blue a little bit more yellow I should have done it on my grid paper I wasn't listening to my own advice but you know what? It's good to play. It's just paper. See? It's getting there. It's still not quite as green as I would like. But you certainly learn a lot about color. So it works really well on our shimmer white. And shimmer white's a lot cheaper than um, 
thinner watercolor paper. So that's a really good option. But now I forgot my red rose is dry. So I'm going to add, see it looks nice the way it is. But now I'm just going to add another layer of color. And you can also shade that way. I really do think Rachel needs to do a video too to really show you, you know, how amazing this can be because I'm not there. But look, even someone who has no clue about art can do this and make it look great. It makes me feel good. And really, that's what it's all about. Okay, so the next thing. So you can paint with it. And look, I've embossed the guitar. Now I'm going to spritz it with water. And I will just add this moss green. Let's see what happens. Okay. So now I'm going to spritz it with a little more water. And look how the, the color runs. So that's cool. We'll heat it for a minute. Okay, so I'm done with that first layer and you can see how I love how it makes all the little dots and stuff and it almost looks like fireworks. But I want to add a little more intense color right around the um, the um, guitar. Sorry, my words are not being found. So I'm just going to add a little bit of blue right around there. And then a little bit more. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? This, I think this, oh, I just love it. Okay, so you see how I added the more of the blue right around the guitar and it just is really bright and vibrant now. And then this part is all light colored. So this is perfect. I can add my sentiment over here. So I have one other thing that I want to show you. So there's a, you can do it in reverse as well. Uh, here we go. I've got another piece of shimmer white and I'm just going to get rid of this grid paper. Put it over here. And here is, I'm going to use the girl from, with the umbrella with, uh, from Beautiful You. And stamp her on. Oh, I did it wrong. Okay, doesn't matter. I'm going to flip it. Every paper has two sides. I want to do this. I want to do the stamping afterwards. So, spritz. And look, see how the powder, if you just have a little bit of it around, it will get on things. So here we go. I'm going to do a little red. And I'm going to mix my colors right away. Add a little blue. And I'm going to go crazy. And add a little yellow, too. And we'll see what happens. Then, it's a bit like a war zone. There, and now I'm going to heat it. Okay, so here is the final effect, and I'm not that thrilled with it just yet. I want to add a little more yellow. So I'm going to spritz again, and that will re just distribute the colors too, but I'm going to add yellow. And then a little bit more water, and then heat it. Okay, so here is my, my palette that I'm going to use my blank canvas that's now colored. And I'm going to ink up my girl. And put her on there decisively. Okay, so that looks, I love that. Absolutely love it. Matted in black. And you've got gorgeous, a gorgeous um, card. Here is a card that I did and then I um, I got the aqua painter again and just colored in the dress and the umbrella just to make it a little bit more um, standing outish. How's that for a good English word? So yeah, brush was a lot of fun and you can see how you can play with it in different ways. You can use shimmer paper, you can use aqua painter, aqua painter paper, how about that? Watercolor paper. And um, yeah, you really can't go wrong because you can keep going back, adding more water, add more powder, play and have fun. All right, have a super day. Bye.